the third day of the International Joint Conference on uh, Learning and Reasoning. Uh, it is a great pleasure and honor to um, have uh, Francesca Toni as our invited speaker. Um, Francesca is a um, professor of artificial intelligence at Imperial College London. Um, she has been working uh, in the field of um, knowledge representation and reasoning and computational logic. Um, she's very well known for her work on argumentation. Uh, she's one of the most prominent um, uh, people in the field of artificial intelligence uh, worldwide. And uh, in the last years, she has been working on um, explainable artificial intelligence. And I think that this will be the topic of uh, the presentation today. Um, so, Francesca, thank you very much for accepting to, to give a presentation today. Uh, the title of the talk is Argumentation Based Explainable AI and Interaction is Reasoning. And um, I give the floor to you. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks uh, to the organizer, to you and the organizer of this, uh, and organizers of this event for the invitation. Uh, first thing, can you all see, is there any problem with my um, slides? Can you all see the slides? Yeah. Okay, do they move? Yes. Yes, L lovely, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about, uh, um, as Alex said, the argumentation-based explainable AI and, and, and try and conclude by connecting it to a, a recent uh, um, approach to understanding human reasoning, uh, referred to or by uh, uh, um, Mercier and Sperber as interactionist approach. Uh, so I'm going first to tell you a little bit about what explainable AI is and what the explainable AI agenda uh, somewhat amounts to. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how we can use computational argumentation for supporting uh, this agenda. Computational argumentation is at the intersection of various a, a kind of uh, uh, areas within AI, in particular knowledge representation and reasoning, uh, multi-agent systems, as well as natural language processing and uh, uh, machine learning. I'm going to, to then conclude by drawing the connection between uh, this uh, theory of, of uh, human reasoning uh, and uh, argumentative explainable AI, in particular, in the direction of conversational um, explainable AI by, by means of argumentation. So let me start with explainable AI. I, I'm not sure I need an introduction because uh, it's quite a popular topic these days. Nonetheless, I'm giving an introduction. Uh, so it is kind of well acknowledged even outside uh, academia uh, that uh, AI needs to work alongside humans uh, to, uh, to, you know, to do its best. Um, and the explainable AI is uh, seen as one way to draw the connection between AI and, uh, and humans using the AI. Um, it's envisaged as important by funding agency, for example, DARPA uh, in the US. Uh, it's somewhat built into legislation, for example, the GDPR can be interpreted as sanctioning uh, people's rights to an explanation. Uh, when uh, um, algorithmic decision making is affecting them. Uh, there are guidelines uh, uh, pushing towards uh, explainability uh, if uh, one wants to develop ethically um, uh, kind of aware and compliant AI. Uh, governments uh, have uh, noticed explainable AI. This is uh, uh, um, mentioning the uh, um, UK effort by the Lord Select Committee on AI that is also pushing towards uh, explainability. Uh, and industry has also uh, woken up with time to it. Uh, JP Morgan, for example, has recently started the new Explainable AI Center of Excellence. So there is uh, a, a kind of uh, a, a large amount of uh, uh, energy devoted to this, uh, to this topic these days. Um, so what is uh, actually explainable AI? What are the uh, standard solutions that uh, exist out there? So uh, uh, typically you have uh, something which is black box, for example, some machine learning uh, uh, technique, but uh, it could be any um, uh, AI method that uh, given an input computes an output. Uh, and you have um, an audience of beneficiaries of uh, that output that um, may want to get an explanation. 
As a simple example here, let's consider uh, a setting where a machine learning technique is used to uh, decide uh, whether an application for a credit card is uh, uh, accepted or denied. Uh, then there are three types of explanations that one may envisage. Attribution-based explanations identify um, uh, features in kind of input features that are responsible for uh, the AI, in this particular case, the machine learning based classifier, uh, to uh, uh, compute its output. So a particular typical explanation for this uh, simple illustrative setting may be that the card was denied because the client is credit unworthy despite having good salary. This kind of attribution-based based explanation identifying features that are in favor or against the computed uh, uh, output. And Lyme and Sharp, that you may have heard of, belong to this class of explanation methods. There are also very popular counterfactual explanations uh, that uh, basically uh, amount to identifying features that, if changed, would give rise to a different output. In this simple example, we may have that had the client had a good credit score, the card would have been granted. And uh, thirdly, there are rule-based explanations um, that uh, may amount to simple rules. For example, if client is credit unworthy, then the card is denied. And there are a bunch of approaches uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, fall into this, into this category. I could have listed here also uh, inductive logic programming uh, that theology programming can be seen as computing uh, uh, natively kind of uh, rule-based explanations because uh, it, it computes uh, uh, rules that can be used to justify uh, output. This is not the only uh, type of approach that to building uh, post hoc explanations for the output of um, machine learning classifiers or other AI methods that are also uh, um, researchers who advocate the use of explainable models instead of explaining post hoc black box models. And this is especially crucial, um, uh, uh, it is argued, when high stake decisions are involved, for example, in healthcare and criminal justice. This is a viewpoint strongly advocated by Cynthia Rudin, whose uh, paper I quote here. Um, and you may already know that she was recently awarded uh, the uh, AAAI's Quirrell AI Award uh, for socially responsible AI, building upon this general, this general view. Um, so uh, th this, is, uh, this is all about um, the, if you like, computer science AI perspective um, as to what an explanation may be. You just get some explanations, attribution-based, counterfactuals, or rules out of a AI system, or you build a system which is uh, explainable uh, uh, by, you know, by construction. But what is the viewpoint of uh, the social sciences? Um, all these views are very much machine-oriented and forget the human uh, drive for explainable AI. Uh, so there are, uh, of course, uh, uh, lots of works in, uh, you know, from within the social sciences uh, as uh, uh, to how um, explanations uh, should be like. Uh, and uh, uh, Tim Miller is a strong advocate of looking at this literature and building solutions to explainable AI uh, that are uh, putting together the social sciences, the AI itself, naturally, as well as human computer interactions to get something which is uh, targeting humans. And uh, in particular within this literature, um, if, we, if you look at how people communicate explanation, then there is a strong drive towards argumentative uh, solutions. And in particular, um, and I quote here from uh, uh, an existing paper uh, by Antaki and, and Lloyd, uh, the majority of what might look like causal attribution turns out to, to look like argumentative claim backings. So it's, a, it's kind of no surprise that uh, uh, people like me working with traditional argumentation uh, should, uh, should look at uh, addressing the uh, explained AI challenges. Uh, actually, we have been doing so uh, for a while since uh, uh, before explainable AI became 
popular. Let's not forget that Explainable AI ha is, has become very popular of late, but has been around AI uh, for much, much longer uh, at the times in which expert systems were built, explainability was already a concern. Um, so uh, you can actually look at uh, um, uh, existing solutions for um, explainable AI, uh, which have nothing openly to do with argumentation and see that already they have some kind of argumentative flavor. If we look at uh, Lime, for example, one of the popular uh, um, uh, kind of feature-based attribution approaches to explanation, you can see that uh, Lime explanations identify reasons for a certain prediction in this particular case where the input is a characterization of a mushroom with several given features and the output is a prediction of uh, uh, the mushroom being poisonous so with with uh, uh, um, 100 percent uh, you know with probability one with 100 percent chances you can see that the features identifying as responsible uh, can be seen as uh, arguments for the predictions, where the features that are identifying as, um, in a sense, negatively influencing that output can be seen as reasons against, against the prediction. So there is a natural interpretation one could give to Lyme as a, an argument, a kind of an argumentative form of explanation, which we would call bipolar because uh, it includes uh, reasons for and reasons against. Okay, uh, let us now see, I'm going now to move this concludes the brief introduction to explainable AI. Let me now move on to the um, uh, uh, second part of the talk, which looks at existing approaches to explain, kind of explainable AI that build upon computation argumentation. Uh, so what is computation argumentation in the first place? I see it as being about solving an equation the equation amounts to uh, identifying an argumentation framework and the semantics for the framework so that it has desirable properties. Uh, an argumentation framework in general can be seen as an abstraction of a debate, and the semantics is just a way to evaluate that debate, whereas the properties sanction the goodness of, of that way to evaluate uh, um, the debate, the semantics itself. And naturally, although I will ignore it in this talk, argumentation semantics uh, are uh, equipped with uh, computational counterparts, algorithms for uh, determining this evaluation, and that's why this is uh, referred to as computational. Um, so I'm going to give you uh, two examples of argumentation framework semantics uh, and properties, uh, which are particularly important in the context of explainable AI. Um, so this very simple, simplest form of uh, computational argumentation is uh, that given by abstract argumentation uh, proposed by Dung uh, back in 1995 and uh, uh, going strong still um, uh, within, within the literature. So an abstract argumentation framework is basically a graph whose nodes are abstract arguments. We don't really care what they, are, what they look like inside, they're just uh, arguments within, you know, within a debate, and the edges uh, represent a, a dialectical relation of attack, uh, which basically boils down to disagreement between opinions. So here we would have that the black argument disagrees with the purple argument, which in turn disagrees with the blue argument. So you can see that this is uh, as abstract uh, uh, a view of a debate as uh, uh, possible. And there is one single relation, that of attack. Um, so one possible instantiation of this form within the context uh, of machine learning that is of interest to us is the one whereby uh, we, we want to address a classification uh, problem, a standard one, um, as um, could be addressed by uh, conventional machine learning techniques. So what is this classification problem? We have a bunch of items. In this particular case, they are um, uh, uh, albums music albums, uh, we have some uh, features characterizing these, uh, you know, these items, so these albums. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the features are all Boolean features. Um, and we have uh, for uh, uh, some of these albums, the training set, we have the, uh, an outcome that they got UK platinum or not. 
uh, in this simple illustration. And then we have one particular item for which we don't have the outcome and we want to compute it. We want to classify the type, knowing its features. So you can actually take a standard problem such as this and map it into an abstract argumentation uh, framework, uh, which basically um, kind of singles out the fact that uh, under, underpinning this, uh, you know, this problem, there is a debate. There is an ongoing debate between data points. You can see that each data point, uh, both the labeled ones and the unlabeled, become arguments, so nodes in the graph. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a, uh, an argument uh, which conveys a bias. We call this a default argument. So by default, if you know nothing about something, you would draw the conclusion that, uh, um, that something is uh, uh, going to get UK platinum or got UK platinum. So this, as I said, is a kind of bias that is a hyperparameter in, in the abstract argumentation uh, formulation of the classification problem. Uh, and the attacks are defined based on disagreement on the classification. So for example, this, uh, this album uh, attacks this other album because uh, they, they have a different uh, uh, um, outcome, but also is based on either specificity, so this album has more specific attributes than the other one, uh, or in the case of the unlabeled data point, is based on irrelevance. So this, uh, this album attacks that because uh, that, that album has an irrelevance to the uh, It's Only Rock and Roll album, um, uh, attribute. So this is a possible formulation of a classification problem in abstract argumentation and at the same time an illustration of what uh, abstract argumentation uh, may look like in practice. So what's the benefit of using, uh, of deploying this formulation? Uh, the benefit only emerge by uh, by the way, this is something, this is an approach we've taken in a bunch of work up to this year. So the benefits of this, uh, of this formulation really comes by looking at the semantics of argumentation. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, abstract argumentation and our simple illustration, that of grounding uh, uh, extension semantics. In general, an extension semantics in Doom's view is just a characterization of a set of winning arguments. The granted extension in this case would sanction uh, the, the black and the, and, the, and the blue arguments as winning, uh, the, the black one because it's unattacked, uh, and the blue one because it is uh, attacked by a, a, a non-winning argument. Uh, and this is non-winning because it is attacked in turn by a winning one. So this is a um, simple illustration of what the evaluation of the debate may, may boil down to. And in our simple kind of illustration, we can see that this uh, uh, would, uh, would lead to um, these two arguments winning because they are kind of unattacked, this losing because it's attacked by winning argument, this winning because it is defended by a winning argument against the only attacker, and these two losing as well. Based on this uh, uh, evaluation of the debate, we can then sanction that given that our default is not in the grounded extension, then the uh, unlabeled data point is classified uh, in, in, in conflict with the default conclusion we would draw. Um, so this is, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, a way to perform classification by means of argumentation. Uh, we have explored uh, if the use of this view in a bunch of settings and uh, compared empirically with, uh, with other machine learning techniques. Uh, for example, decision trees and go to neural networks and see that it can, it can, it can perform quite well. Uh, it is what Cynthia Rudin would call an explainable uh, solution to, you know, to machine learning. But of course, uh, this is uh, uh, only going insofar as uh, extracting argumentation framework. It doesn't really go into um, kind of uh, uh, proposing explanation per se, and we will see this is an important consideration to be made uh, with any interpretable method, be it argumentation based or, or kind of otherwise, uh, that the method itself uh, may not necessarily be deemed explainable, uh, and there may be extra steps to be done to draw explanations from these argumentation frameworks. But before we look at that, let me give you another example of uh, argumentation framework, 
that is quite uh, uh, useful in the context of explainable AI. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, uh, before uh, uh, I do that, properties uh, which play a bit of a side role in this talk, uh, goodness of semantics in this particular setting uh, boil down to, uh, for example, existence uh, and uniqueness of the uh, grounded extension, um, which are important when performing classification. <clears throat> So as I said, let's look at another instance. Uh, and that's bipolar argumentation I, I already briefly touched upon. Uh, in this particular type of argumentation framework in addition to attacks, namely disagreements, we also have support, namely agreement. I'm indicating here with the, the double uh, arrow. Sometimes I put a plus next to the, to the arrow. Um, so the, this particular type of, uh, of framework is quite useful when uh, uh, one uh, wants to abstract uh, actual human debates, uh, for example, as emerging in uh, uh, item product, product views. Um, this is uh, an example of a bipolar argumentation framework uh, that I have manually extracted from uh, reviews for a book on Amazon. Um, and uh, you can see that some opinions expressed in the reviews are supporting uh, the reading of this particular book, whereas other opinions are attacking the reading of a particular book. Uh, and uh, reviews may uh, support or attack one another as well. Uh, the, the goal of relation-based argument mining, something I'm also uh, kind of working on, um, is indeed that of extracting this kind of bipolar argumentation frameworks from, from text and using uh, machine learning, uh, um, supervised machine learning for, for performing this, uh, you know, this abstraction. Uh, so this is another type of, uh, of uh, argumentation framework that naturally lends itself well to uh, explainability. And you could actually, uh, as I will argue in a second, use uh, this kind of argumentation framework to support recommendations built from reviews themselves. Uh, but to do that, you need to talk about um, uh, evaluation. And also you need to in integrate a different and additional components within argumentation frameworks, which is that of quantities sanctioning uh, the, um, the kind of dialectical uh, or otherwise strength of, uh, of arguments themselves. Uh, so the uh, particular uh, framework that uh, I will illustrate is that to quantify bipolar argumentation where arguments are born with an intrinsic strength, which is a number uh, between zero and one, for example, um, and the sanctions how good arguments are on their own before debate takes place. So these uh, intrinsic strengths may, for example, in the review setting emerge from votes opinions that uh, um, people may give to, to reviewers, uh, you know, to reviews themselves. So given uh, this kind of quantified bipolar argumentation framework, one can then define uh, semantics, which amount to uh, computing a dialectical strength, for example, again, in zero one. Uh, and uh, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, there are various ways to do that. Here I'm showing you the numbers that are computed by a particular semantics with accompanying algorithm. This is the F code, something we ourselves define. And you can see that an attacked arguments uh, uh, and unsupported arguments keep their intrinsic strength, 0.5, as their dialectical strength. Uh, but then arguments which are attacked have their intrinsic strength decreased, and arguments that are supported may have their intrinsic strength increased. There is, of course, a proper uh, mathematical formulation of how to compute these numbers. I'm just trying to convey you here the intuition. So this is uh, another type of argumentation framework, a different form of semantics, a gradual rather than extension based. Uh, and uh, it can be used to support um, in intrinsically, if you like, transparent uh, decision making. Uh, for example, in our review uh, aggregation setting, we could uh, use uh, the algorithm that, that I just mentioned, the F-code, to uh, support recommendations by looking at uh, items, in this case books, uh, that have the highest dialectical strength following the blade, kind of debate. And this is something that we use actually in alternative to simple uh, kind of star aggregation or score aggregation methods uh, 
uh, that are uh, given in uh, various uh, uh, review-based websites such as, such as Amazon. In this particular setting, the properties amount, uh, you know, they are various uh, and different. Uh, and one particular one that plays an important role in our setting is uh, dialectical monotonicity, which amounts to the fact that attacks decrease strength and supports increased strength. This is a property that is uh, satisfied by uh, this particular DF quad semantic itself. Uh, so this is uh, somewhat uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, an overview of, uh, of quantified bipolar argumentation. And as I said, this is this one I, I, I like to mention because uh, it, it is something that um, we are actually using uh, extensively within explainable AI. Uh, and I'm showing here an example of how we can deploy it to explain black box uh, um, uh, machine learning classifiers, for example, uh, uh, simple uh, convolutional neural networks uh, with uh, one single uh, hidden hidden layer. So uh, convolutional, although simple, so they're still this kind of architectures. They're, they're still kind of obscure, and it's not necessarily obvious as to how a certain classification is done. For example, for an for an input text um, and. Uh, um, Without getting into details and the functioning and the fact that uh, you know there are some 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 filters within uh, the architecture which correspond to the hidden layers and then some fully connected layers for performing the classifications based on these filters. Uh, this is the slide I'm going to go to illustrate to describe this architecture. But what's important is that uh, one could extract uh, by quantified bipolar argumentation frameworks to explain the outputs of this uh, of this. Uh, um, kind of architecture for classification with text, uh, and one particular uh, output, uh, one particular kind of argumentation framework that one could extract uh, using uh, a, an input text, which is somewhat, uh, um, uh, you know, represented uh, by the uh, unattacked and unsupported uh, argument here. One can uh, can see uh, both the input words uh, that are fed into this architecture, uh, and the and the filters from the convolutional layers, as well as the prediction as arguments within a, a bipolar argumentation framework. Uh, here I use uh, uh, plus uh, and minuses to indicate attack and support, uh, and one can uh, uh, extract these. Uh, kind of uh, quantified bipolar argumentation framework uh, by using the um, uh, a specific quantity. In this case, we use uh, LRP and exist an existing technique for explaining uh, neural networks. LRP stands for layer-wise uh, relevance propagation. Uh, so we, by by looking at it as a gradual semantic for. Uh, um, uh, uh, the argumentation framework uh, being driven by the uh, requirement to satisfy the dialectical monotonicity property I already mentioned, we can extract the argumentation framework. So here the framework is extracted from the neural network rather than given up front, and the extraction is, is driven by the semantics in the first place and the need for the semantics to satisfy a property that is desirable of argumentation. Uh, the size of the various arguments here represent the dialectical strength uh, given by these gradual semantics. And uh, you can see that some words are repeated uh, and the repetition is dictated by the fact that these words can play a role in attacking and supporting various filters uh, themselves. You can see that. Uh, um, Although this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of inspectable and, if you like, transparent uh, as an as an argumentation framework, or maybe more transparent than what goes on here, is far from being explainable. Uh, and that's where, in a sense, the uh, um, in important connection with the social sciences and the type of explanations so we want or we can draw uh, uh, um, is uh, uh, kind of crucial. So in this particular uh, view of using argumentation for uh, explaining uh, um, other AI techniques, 
uh, the overall view is that uh, we start from data, as in the simple uh, album classification problem I've shown you, or we start with a system built from data, as in the case of the convolutional neural network I've shown you, and uh, um, this system may compute some outputs, and then we draw an argumentation framework from it, uh, as I've shown you so far. But then the next step is uh, uh, the one of drawing argumentative explanations. As I said, I don't believe in the first place that the framework, the argumentation frameworks themselves, can naturally uh, uh, work as argumentative explanations. Um, so before I tell you a little bit more about our kind of argumentative explanation, uh, we, you know, there are very many approaches already looking at um, uh, instantiating this view of uh, uh, expandable AI uh, by means of computational argumentation. We have recently written a survey on this and we classify works uh, as being of three types. Uh, uh, intrinsic uh, uh, approaches, uh, whereby uh, the models are natively defined using computational argumentation, as in the simple example of the album classification program I've shown you, and then post hoc methods, as in the case of this. And this could be complete or approximate. The CNN example belongs to the second category. Uh, so I'm, I'm here focusing mostly on our work, but there are you know there are works by you know by other researchers in this area that are uh, worthwhile and that follow this general approach. So the next question is, what kind of argumentative explanations uh, should we aim for, and uh, what does it mean to extract argumentative explanations from the uh, argumentation frameworks? So we have made certain choices in some of our work. For example, uh, in the simple uh, setting whereby we use uh, a bipolar, quantified bipolar argumentation framework uh, extracted from a CNN, we have developed um, uh, interactive explanations so whereby users can click on nodes. So let's start with the known, with the, with the static version on the left. You can see that the input text here is uh, uh, seen as. Uh, um, uh, kind of uh, 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 linked to the filters, uh, which in turn are seen as uh, attacking or supporting uh, classification. The filters are visualized as work clouds showing n-grams from the training set most important to those filters. Otherwise, uh, they wouldn't be clear to humans. Uh, and they, uh, instead of showing uh, uh, kind of repeating words several times as they contribute uh, several arguments in the debate, we, uh, we choose to um, uh, indicate uh, they are average, uh, sorry, they are, they are total uh, uh, strength, positive or uh, negative in this case, uh, by uh, using uh, colors and, and strength of colors in the input. So we had to make certain choices as to how we, we, we took this and showed it to users in a way that they could interact with. And we've actually done experiments with humans with this presentation. Uh, and we have chosen to go for interactive uh, uh, kind of solution whereby one can click on the filter and then this will show precisely the supporters uh, uh, or attackers of, uh, of, that, of that filter. Uh, and in turn, how this influences the uh, final classification. So this is a particular way to, to perform what I mentioned before, to draw argumentative explanations from the argumentation framework. But of course, uh, it is uh, rather ad hoc and it's one of many uh, possible ones. So how, how can we go systematically uh, and uh, um, kind of scientifically towards building uh, um, explainable AI solutions based at, on an argumentation that go beyond uh, the simple argumentation frameworks uh, uh, to serve simply as, a, as an interim uh, step towards building the explanations. So we can again look at um, the social sciences and in particular, as I mentioned already in the introduction, the um, uh, interactionist view of, uh, of human reasoning. This is uh, put forward by uh, Mercier and Server. Uh, in, a, in a book that I enjoyed very much reading, The Enigma of Reason. Um, so uh, here I'm summarizing their view. Their view is uh, concerning human reasoning and is very much presented as in 
in uh, uh, opposition to the uh, uh, type one, type two uh, way of understanding reasoning that Kahneman uh, is, you know, has uh, famously put forward. Um, I'm, I'm just giving you a summary of what this view is. Of course, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm in opposition to arguing for or against, uh, but I think it's an interesting view. And it's definitely one that is useful for supporting the uh, explainable AI view uh, uh, based upon kind of argumentation. So uh, the, the interactionist view of human reasoning uh, uh, claims among other things that reasons play a role in the after the fact explanation and justification of intuitions, not in the process of intuitive inference itself. So it is uh, reason as an aftermath, as a post hoc process. Uh, and uh, they, they go uh, further to say the reasoning is not an alternative to kind of intuitive inference. So reasoning is not type two uh, versus type one seen as intuitive. Reasoning is a use of intuitive inferences about about reasons, so they see reasoning as a module, the same way as we have a, 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 a module in our brain for image processing. Uh, they also state that the normal conditions for the use of reasons are social and more specific, specifically biological. So this goes back to the point I started with, uh, based on T. Miller's survey. Um, and th th these are, you know, this is a summary of how they view these as uh, you know how they how they position themselves or this theory against the intellectualist approach uh, such as type one type two approach. Uh, so based on experiments with humans, they they kind of identify the fact that uh, uh, people are particularly um, suboptimal uh, when the, they need to um, uh, uh, kind of produce uh, uh, their own reasons. They tend to have uh, uh, a kind of my side bias. So, so they are, uh, they kind of mostly produce reasons for their, for their side and they are kind of lazy in not being very exigent towards their own, their own reasons. But once you get people to evaluate the reasons produced by others, then they perform a lot better. They are unbiased. They can even accept challenging reasons uh, if they're strong enough, and they are uh, demanding. Uh, that they, they, they are uh, uh, convinced only by by good enough reasons. So the the viewpoint of Mercier and Sperber, uh, and uh, I'm of course giving a very imperfect representation of their view. Maybe I'm not do, doing them justice, but their view is that uh, uh, you know this is this is sanctioning the fact that uh, you know reason is really uh, um, aimed at at others not at oneself. So not, not reasoning for better decisions, but reasoning for persuading uh, others. So independently of the uh, uh, features of this theory uh, for interpreting human reasoning, what can we learn from it in terms of uh, uh, argumentation-based explainable AI? Uh, so based on the fact that, that uh, according to this approach, uh, people use reason to explain or justify decisions already taken and beliefs already held. So should then machines also use reasons to explain their outputs, no matter how those outputs are obtained. I mean, we don't really care, but should, uh, should the reasons be the uh, outward explanation methodology? Uh, and given that the normal conditions for the use of reasons are social and biological, should explanations for machines out be also social and biological. And this is something already envisaged uh, earlier on in my talk uh, when I talked about uh, Tim Miller's survey. Um, and uh, and uh, finally, um, given that uh, they claim reasoning thrives in the back and forth of conversation, uh, where uh, um, people can exchange arguments and counter arguments, should we develop argumentation-based forms of explainable AI as conversations between humans and machines should, should therefore the privileged format of explanations for uh, machine learning techniques or AI techniques be they black box or interpretable, should the privileged form be one of conversations? Uh, so we have actually uh, um, done some work in this, uh, in this setting. We looked at building automatically conversations with humans uh, from, uh, from templates uh, 
uh, instantiated on argumentation frameworks. Uh, we, we've done some experiments uh, um, with the Rotten Tomatoes uh, uh, website. Uh, we kind of built a counterpart to the Rotten Tomatoes uh, um, prediction tool um, uh, by kind of critics and aggregations of, the, of, their, of their opinions uh, and, uh, and used uh, uh, argumentation as the underpinning methodology, in particular, uh, we can, uh, uh, building upon a simple ontology where, whereby movies uh, have uh, acting, directing, and writing features, uh, which in turn may be specific actors, directors, or writers, and uh, using the predicted ratings uh, computed by recommended system uh, as a dialectical strength of argumentation framework, so as to obtain an argumentation framework, with, which is bipolar, with attack and support and um, quantified with numbers given by the predictive ratings, we can build automatically conversations. For example, uh, a user may ask why a certain, a certain movie, for example, The Post, uh, uh, was highly, which is the M here, was highly rating, where 0.85, in the 01 setting is quite high. Um, and uh, uh, actually here it's in the minus one one setting is quite high. So the user may ask that, and then the um, machine can navigate the argumentation framework uh, and for example, identifying the stronger support or the stronger attacker and build a reply of the kind. This movie was highly rated because the acting was great, although the writing was poor. Uh, the user can engage further in this conversation why uh, was the acting considered to be great, and then the system can look at stronger supporters. Uh, and uh, the, if the user is interested, the, the system can also go down and look at the opinions expressed uh, in the system from which this conceptualization and the recommended system were constructed. Uh, in this simple setting, the conversation is solely a navigation of the argumentation framework in general, and it's driven by templates in general, we are looking at uh, something more sophisticated, more flexible as well. This brings me to my conclusions. I hope I have uh, uh, convinced you. Uh, for sure, I've tried to argue that computational argumentation can empower various forms of explainable AI, including conversational forms as envisaged by the interactionist view of human reasoning. I'm supported in this research by uh, uh, a research chair uh, funded by JP Morgan and the Royal Academy of Engineering, uh, whom I thank, and by C, uh, uh, whom I thank as well. Uh, and I am currently recruiting, so if you're interested, uh, please uh, uh, get in touch with me. Thanks and happy to answer questions.